here today in Hong Kong, the Pearl of the Orient, one of the world's magnificent cities. And I've got a few thoughts about this place, even some tips, especially if you're here for the first time or just looking to get around this city. Hong Kong has been in the news over the last few years, and some of that news has been negative, at least in the United States, whether it be the harsh COVID lockdowns or some of the protests and tensions that have gone on between mainland China and Hong Kong. But I must say, Hong Kong has always been one of my favorite cities in Asia, and based on my recent experience, I still think it's a great place to come visit and explore. In this video, I'm going to focus on some travel tips and tell you some things you might want to know before you come visit. Now let's start with the number one tourist attraction in Hong Kong, and that is Victoria Peak. If you're coming here, especially for the first time, you're almost certainly going to go to Victoria Peak. And most people will either take a taxi or they will hop on this funicular with the glass ceilings and ride to the top. Now it's going to cost you something like $9 one way to take this to the top. But it's not really the top, you're actually just going most of the way up the mountain to a shopping plaza. Now this little plaza is called the Galleria and there's all sorts of little shops and restaurants. You can also pay an additional fee and go up to the top of this building, it's called the Sky Terrace. And you're going to capture an amazing view up there. Now what many people do, and what may be a better idea than paying to go to the top of the Sky Terrace, is to head about 100 meters down to your right hand side. That's to your right if you're facing the city. And what you do is you get to this place, it's called the Lion's Pavilion. Absolutely free, and the view here is spectacular. The only problem is you're gonna be facing big crowds here. Day and night, this place is always gonna be crowded. So you're gonna to have to kind of push your way in to capture a picture. Now the best idea, if you really wanna capture the most amazing view of Hong Kong, is to head left from the pavilion. Just about 100 meters away, you reach the Hong Kong Trail. And you gotta walk about 10 minutes down this trail. And it is a beautiful pathway to walk down. It leads you out towards the edge of the hill and away from what they call Victoria Gap, which is where that plaza is. Ultimately, you end up coming to a great viewing area. In my opinion, this is a much better place to view the city and to capture that amazing skyline picture. First of all, you're out on the edge of the hill, so you have a better perspective. Second of all, this is not as well known. You're not gonna have the same crowds here. Now, you're not gonna find yourself completely alone, but I think it's a lot better option, a lot better view of not only the skyline, but of the harbor as well. The next thing you should know about Hong Kong is you've got to try the famous Hong Kong dim sum. And a good place to try that is at this place, Tim Ho Wan, a famous restaurant often referred to as the most inexpensive Michelin rated restaurant in the world. There are a few Tim Ho Wan restaurants around. They become quite popular. This one's located right in central Hong Kong near the ferry terminal. And they're known for their dumplings, but also for their pork barbecue buns. This might be their most popular dish, a dish that gave them that Michelin star. Definitely try this out when you're here. Another great thing to know about Hong Kong, and something I really love, is the public transportation in this city. First of all, you have a fantastic metro system that's very accessible. Also, the taxi system here is really slick. And I say really slick, it's these red Toyotas that you see. And I like it because it's tied in with Uber. Uh, Hong Kong is one of the few places in Asia that you can use Uber. In most of Southeast Asia, they use an app called Grab that's a little bit quirky. And I love Uber, I think it's a better app. It's tied in with the local taxi, so you don't have to wait long. You also have another option over on Hong Kong Island, which is a light rail system they call the Ding Ding. It's these double-decker tram cars that you can get on and fun to ride on, fun to see these pass by you just on Hong Kong Island. Yet another good public transportation option in this city. Another thing to know about Hong Kong is it is a great place for custom bespoke menswear. I'm talking about suits and shirts. You may as well get measured up. They can get you a custom shirt in as little as one day. 
There are dozens of places that you can go. I went to a famous place called Sam's Taylor, small little place located in Kowloon, and they show pictures of many of the celebrities who they fit custom suits for, including Prince Charles and Colin Powell and Bill Clinton. Only took a few minutes, and the next day they delivered the shirt to my hotel room. Altogether, this was a good experience to have. The shirt itself cost me about 75 US dollars and it fits fantastic. I will say it's not the perfect shirt. The material I don't love because it's not non-wrinkle. It wrinkles up really easily. It's not performance fabric. It doesn't stretch. So it's not the perfect travel shirt, but still, if you're here, get measured up, get yourself a custom fit shirt. I don't think you'll regret it. Another thing about Hong Kong, I found that it often rains. That's just Part of the deal, the clear skies that you see on some of the tourist pictures from the top of Victoria Peak. I've never been there when it's perfectly clear skies. It's always a little bit cloudy, a little overcast, and that's fine because it cools it off a little bit, but it wouldn't be Hong Kong without a little bit of rain. Feels good. Hong Kong gets almost 90 inches of rain every year. That's a staggering amount more than double of what Seattle gets, and Seattle's known for its rain. The difference is, in Hong Kong, the rain falls between May and September, the monsoon season. If you come during the winter months, you'll probably be all right. But between May and September, you better bring an umbrella. One fun experience to have while you're visiting Hong Kong is to go to one of the many markets. There are a number of markets in Hong Kong. Most of them are over in Kowloon. And Kowloon's a place you're probably gonna spend some time in anyway. It's where a lot of restaurants, a lot of shopping is. It's where Sam's Taylor that I talked about earlier is. Now, a lot of markets are open only during the daytime hours, but there are some night markets, and that's what you're looking at here. Most of these markets are gonna have a variety of cheap souvenirs. There's some counterfeit items, and you may or may not wanna buy anything. If you do, make sure to haggle a little bit, but definitely check out these markets. They're a lot of fun. I must say, I've been to Hong Kong a number of times. I find the people very friendly. Make sure to strike up a conversation with a local. This guy had a good discussion with me and my daughter in a cafe for about 20 minutes. Most of the Hong Kong people speak good English. So don't be afraid to strike up a conversation. Who knows, they may even want a picture with you. Let's talk about the amazing skyline for a minute, and particularly the Kowloon waterfront. Aside from the top of Victoria's Peak, this is the best place to capture a view of the skyline, especially after dark. As you can see here, it lights up. In fact, at 8 p.m. every night, they do a laser light show. Let me give you two quick tips here. First of all, you may not want to come right at 8 o'clock. The laser light show really isn't that great. It's the skyline itself that's beautiful. Second tip I will give you, you may want to hire a photographer. Your phone might capture a spectacular picture of the skyline, but if you want to get a picture with your face in it, maybe a picture of your group, the lighting is really tricky with the backlight, with the fog that's so often there, and the shadows are kind of weird. You can see here, there's also a lot of people that could crowd into your picture. So I would recommend spending about $10 hiring a photographer. You can find them all along the waterfront there and you'll capture a much better picture. My wife and I did this about 15 years ago and we were really happy with the picture that we got. Everybody else said, nah, our phones will do the job. But even the best smartphones will have a difficult time with the awkward lighting right here. So hire a professional. Another tip for you, another thing you might wanna do when you're in Hong Kong is to get a foot massage. There are a lot of places all throughout the city where you can get a foot massage, and they are much cheaper than they are in the United States. And it's not just in Hong Kong, it's all throughout Asia. Services like foot massage, pedicure, manicure, much cheaper. Hong Kong, known as an expensive city, but for 15 or $20, you can get a 60 minute foot massage that's gonna feel really good after walking around the city all day. One other thing to know, one other recommendation, is to go visit the Big Buddha. This is called the Tian Tan Buddha, and it's out on Lantau Island. 
It's a whole different side of Hong Kong and it's a fun little day trip. Most people take the cable car to the top. It leads to kind of a touristy little plaza up there, but there's some cool shops and things to see. And then you walk up to the Big Buddha. Now, just remember 25. It takes 25 minutes to go one way on the cable car, then 25 minutes back down. Also, it costs about the equivalent of 25 US dollars. As you ride up the cable car, you'll have a great view of the nearby Hong Kong International Airport. And one consideration is there's a place you can store your luggage. If you have an afternoon or evening flight, you may want to consider coming here, storing your luggage, riding up the cable car, checking out the Big Buddha, and then coming back down and catching your flight. It worked out really well for us. Just make sure to keep an eye on the time. You don't want to miss your flight. The village here is touristy. There's kind of a Disneyland feel to it. And nothing here is ancient. In fact, even the Big Buddha itself was built I think in 1993. That said, there is a monastery here. There are people worshiping. And this place is on a lot of lists of top things to see in Asia. It's become a real respected destination among travelers. Big Buddha is right behind me there. And you've got to earn it. You go up almost 300 steps to get there. And by the top, you know, <laughs> You're huffing and puffing a little bit, but it's worth it. It is really cool to see at the top. Once at the top, you can go inside. You'll see people worshiping. They don't allow pictures, but capture some views from the top looking out over the village as well. This place is beautiful if you're not fogged in. So there you have a few tips and things you should know about Hong Kong before you go. Not a huge comprehensive list. There's a lot of resources online. You can learn more, but this should at least get you started. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below.